prototype with both control saints seeing it at E3 in 2018. A transforming gun and cool telekinetic powers, what was there not to love? That's what I signed up for, but what I ended up playing was far better than anything I was expecting. It felt like a bait and switch, honestly. The marketing hooked me in with promises of a badass protagonist with powers, but instead launched me into a creepy and unsettling world filled to the brim with mystery waiting to be uncovered and danger around every corner, and I loved every single minute of it. In Control, you play as Jesse Faden on a quest to find her brother, but ends up becoming the new director of the Federal Bureau of Control, a government agency that studies and cleans up the after effects of any paranormal events. All this takes place within the oldest house, an ever-changing building in the middle of New York where a strange entity called Hiss has invaded the FBC and taken over control of the staff. Admittedly, the game starts off pretty slow. Within the first hour, Jesse doesn't seem like that interesting of a character. The oldest house seems like just an empty, creepy office building after hours that you're running around in, and combat doesn't seem fun as you only have a pistol and no powers, and seems like the enemies can easily overpower you as you're ducking behind cover because you can't take that much damage. And in terms of a story, you just have two thoughts. What does this mean, and what the fuck is going on? I thought to myself, did I make a mistake in buying this game, but as you progress just a little bit more past the first hour, Control pulls a 180 and sends you down the rabbit hole. The game hits a high point and doesn't come down until the end of the campaign. You meet a lot of interesting and weird characters like Ati the Janitor, to my favorite character that I actually never got to see but his presence is everywhere because of video recordings and his name was always referenced, the overeager scientist Dr. Darling. The oldest house becomes one of the most interesting places I've ever had a game take place in. It's extremely dark, creepy, and unsettling. This isn't a horror game, but there are definitely horror elements, so if you scare easily, be warned. The story became so deep I found myself wrapped up in it and lost all sense of time as hours passed. I hate searching for collectibles, but in this game I was going out of my way to look for any, hoping I found a bit more lore so I could understand the oldest house and everything around it. Collectibles in controls aren't things like concept art, they're FBC case files, audio and video recordings, and even phone calls. Some are actually clues to help solve certain puzzles, but most serve as ways to understand the world that you're in and to get a timeline as to how things got this bad in the FBC when the hiss took over. I highly recommend reading through the collectibles and searching for more as it makes the game's confusing story a lot easier to understand. The more you find and read, the more you'll start to uncover the mysteries within the oldest house. Control becomes fun once you start unlocking different gun forms and powers. Combat goes from feeling stiff and grounded when you're just starting out, to feeling fluid and unrestricted as Jessie turns into a badass knocking down waves of enemies with her different gun forms and floating around launching satellite dishes at whoever decides to get in your way. There's one thing that always stands out whenever you get into combat and that's a destruction. You can destroy just about anything in control, leaving entire rooms in disarray after a fight with the hiss. The more destroyed the environment gets, the more weapons you have at your disposal. The RPG that just missed you and blew out a chunk of wall behind you, you can now launch that debris at whoever just shot at you. Pull pieces of destroyed objects and debris in front of you to make a shield to block incoming gunfire, and then use it to launch projectiles down at the enemies below you, staggering them, turning a defensive ability into an offensive one. Combining powers and destruction is one of the most satisfying things in this game. Calling the oldest house huge is an understatement. The map is massive with multiple different levels, all with secret areas to explore and find collectibles. The game is a giant maze, but you can bring up the minimap and use signs scattered around the building to make it easier to find your destination. Only problem I had was finding myself on the minimap. I wish the icon was a bit brighter or they made it pulse so it'd be easier to tell where I am when I bring up the map, as well as letting you know if the dark areas of the map are above or below you. Navigating and finding new areas was a bit of a challenge for me, especially since you'll be doing a lot of backtracking and getting access to areas that were once locked off to you, whether it was due to your clearance level or you didn't have the abilities to reach that new area. Puzzles are a big part of this game. You'll come across them a lot, but don't let that turn you off because they aren't that hard. They're just required to think outside the box sometimes or just by trial and error. I hate puzzles, but I actually like the ones in control. For example, the traffic light altered item. 
using a popular children's game as a solution to the puzzle and then reading the FBC case file about the lore around this paranormal traffic light made me like the puzzle even more. Hands down my favourite part of the game was the Astray Maze fight sequence. Navigating a constantly shifting maze with moving platforms while heavy metal music was blasting in the background as you fight off the hiss felt amazing. The game isn't linear and doesn't force you to follow the main story mission, so you can deviate and go exploring and completing side quests to get more points to buy upgrades. So if you're stuck at a certain point of the game and was constantly dying like I was, go complete some side quests and find crafting materials so you can get more powers and upgrades to take on the stronger level enemies. The story took me around 20 hours to finish. I was exploring and read through a bunch of lore, so you could probably finish it in less time if you avoid that. After the story ends, the game isn't finished though, there are side quests to finish, random alerts pop up that you can go to to fight off the hiss and help the FBC regain control. Challenges to complete that give you mods and materials for crafting, and there's also a skill tree to upgrade your powers, and using the same materials collected from challenges or around the building to upgrade Jesse's personal mods to fit your playstyle. Whether you prefer more health or energy or you can mod for specific attacks, there's also gun mods and upgrades which give you more slots to make your service weapon more powerful. There are more areas to explore now that you have all the abilities after the main story is over, and there's also some easter eggs hidden in there, so there's a decent amount of content here to keep you playing for a while. Control is easily the best story game I've played this year so far. However, I can't recommend this to everyone. Some people may find it boring. If you're not into creepy, weird, and mysterious intellectual games with puzzles that require you to think outside the box, and a deep story that requires you to do a little extra reading about the lore to understand it a bit more, then this game is not for you. It might just seem like a boring and confusing game with some decent combat thrown in. However, if you're into that stuff and curious about trying Control, I can highly recommend it. Control's current price is at $60, so should you buy it, absolutely. This is a must buy, like I said, if you're into these type of games. But that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you've finished the game or you're playing it so far, you can leave your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. And subscribe for more game reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.